people are starting to talk about inequality more in Britain, more than they have done for decades and decades. But they're not sure what they really mean by inequality. They're not sure what kind of gaps between people are the gaps that they're most worried about. They know it's about money, and maybe it's about wealth, or maybe it's that some people have got a lot of money and some haven't. But when you begin to narrow it down, you find out that what really irks people is that when some people are paid a lot more than others, because the amount of money you're paid is a reflection of how much you're respected. And there's a feeling it's wrong, and lots of politicians talk about inequality being wrong in the country, but not many people know how wrong it is. We used to be very, very unequal. About 100 years ago, the best of 1% of people in Britain took home 20% of all income. Uh, the gap between the bottom and the top was truly enormous. At the bottom were servants and people who were destitute, and at the top were people who owned huge country houses. That gap narrowed. It narrowed in the 1920s and in the 1930s. It narrowed just as fast in the 1940s and 50s and slowed down a bit in the 60s, but carried on narrowing through to the 70s. So that by around about 1974-75, apart from Sweden, Britain was the most equal large country in Europe. The best off 1% only took about 6% of all income in the 1970s, just 4% after tax, just four times more than the average person. And then that began to change, and inequalities rose towards the end of the 70s, rapidly in the 80s, but they carried on rising in the 90s, and they rose in the noughties, and now we're back to where we were in the 1930s. And often people say, oh, well, this is just global, it's happening everywhere. But if we look at other countries, if we look at the other richest countries in the world, the 25 richest countries in the world, we find that almost all of them are much more equal than we are. And the only countries which are more unequal than us now are Israel, the United States and Singapore. And our inequalities are increasing at such a rate, and in some of those countries inequalities are beginning to fall, or at least not rise anymore, so that by 2030 we will become the most unequal country in the rich world. And this has massive implications. implications that it's very hard to grasp when you're used to living in an unequal society. It affects who people can mix with, it affects how we go to school, it affects what our children do, it affects the kind of jobs people try to get or how desperately they have to work at several jobs if the jobs are lowly paid, how much people avoid trying to do other jobs. Jobs they might like doing, jobs that might be socially useful but simply don't pay enough for somebody from their social class. And this kind of difference between us, this kind of Inequality is not something which is normal in most of Europe. It's not something that's been normal in most of our recent history. And it's changing our society. It's making us look at other people, sometimes not quite like people. And it's causing a degree of angst and a degree of anxiety and a degree of depression in the young, which is completely justified because we're entering them in a world where they're being told they've got to compete, but only a tiny proportion of them will be truly respected will be truly successful, will get through and live what may be a comfortable life. And there's a point where you have to say enough is enough. When you're heading to be the most unequal country in the rich world, something's gone very badly wrong.